Hello and welcome to Machine Learning. I'm Javita Christie. And in this video, we are going to talk about how humans learn, because in order to understand how machine learning actually happens, we need to first understand how human beings learn. So let's begin. What is human learning? In cognitive science, learning is typically referred to as the process of gaining information through observation. So you could be out um, somewhere just watching things or maybe watching someone doing things and that could be how you would be learning. And in cognitive science, cognitive science is all about how the brain works, how cognition works, how people can recognize things. So in that type of a science, learning uh, is referred to as a process where information is gained mainly by observation. Now, why do we need to learn? In our daily life, we need to carry out multiple activities. It may be a task as simple as walking down the street or doing the homework. Uh, it could also be some complex task, like deciding the angle in which a rocket should be launched so that it can have a particular trajectory. So the tasks um, can be any number of tasks, any number of activities, and um, they could be simple activities or complex activities and based uh, because you want to be able to do those things that is why you need to do some learning that is why I, that is why you need to go to school because you, you want to be able to do certain um, activities um, by be, by learning at school to do a task in a proper way we need to have prior information on one or more things related to the task. So it's very important to know how the task is to be done. And um, we need to have some other extra information about that task to be able to do it in a proper way. And as we keep learning more, or in other words, as we keep getting more information, our efficiency keeps improving. So let's say that you are um, driving from one place to another and the more number of times you drive on the same road the faster you can go i mean your sp speed of course it does not um, does not exceed like way beyond 100 or something but uh, you'll definitely reach faster to a place if you have been there before and the reason being that you know the surroundings and um, you might even know you know if there are ditches on the road you might you might be aware of that because you're traveling there regularly. So the first time when you are trying to go from one place to another, you'll definitely take longer than the second time. So as you keep getting more information, you will start improving. And um, another example is with more knowledge, the ability to do homework with less number of mistakes increases. In the same way, information from past rocket launches can help in taking the right precautions and it can make the rocket launch successful because you have some information about what went wrong uh, the previous time. So with more learning, tasks can be performed more efficiently. Now let's look at some types of human learnings, which means um, how many ways are there in which human beings actually learn? So number one is either somebody who is an expert in the subject directly teaches us. So this would be like a school teacher where you're going and the school teacher is uh, teaching you mathematics because the mathematics teacher knows, knows mathematics very well. The second way of learning is to build our own notion indirectly based on what we have learned from the past. So um, this this would be something like, you know, you you if you have a a burner and you are going close to that you have a stove at home and um, you're going close to that burner maybe there was a time when you did not know that that was going to be hot and maybe you touched it and um, now because you know that you touched it that previous time and it was really hot you are not going to make the same mistake of touching it so now nobody taught you the fact nobody uh, told you the fact that it's going to be hot but it's something that you developed or learned on your own. And uh, we could be doing our, doing learning ourselves after multiple attempts uh, at being unsuccessful. 
So it's like riding a bicycle. You try and um, uh, you try to ride the bicycle, you fall, maybe get injured, but then eventually, after several unsuccessful attempts, you will be successful and you learn how to ride a bike. So the first type of learning we may call falls under the category of learning directly under expert guidance. Okay. The second type falls under learning guided by knowledge gained from experts. And the third type is self-learning. Let's look at each of these types um, a little more deeply with uh, real life examples. So the first one is learning under expert guidance. So an infant may inculcate certain traits and characteristics, learning straight from its guardians. So that means a baby uh, learns from the parents. He calls his hand a hand because that is the information he gets from his parents. So how does a baby know it's a hand, that the hand is called a hand because the parents told him that this is, uh, this is a hand, this is a leg, right? The sky is blue to him because that is what his parents have taught him. So if, um, if the parents are talking to the child in English, they are going to say that the sky is blue. And that's how the child knows to call that color blue. We say that the baby learns things from his parents. The next phase of life is when the baby starts going to school. So that's where uh, he or she is going to meet teachers. In school, he starts with basic familiarization of alphabets and digits, right? Uh, that's what happens in kindergarten. Then the baby learns how to form words from the alphabets and numbers from the digits. So it's just initially it's just A to Z and uh, zero to nine, but then the baby is able to form words using those alphabets and bigger numbers using those digits. So slowly more complex learning happens in the form of sentences. It's not just words now, it's sentences, paragraphs, complex mathematics, science, etc. And the baby is able to learn all these things from his teacher who already has knowledge on these in these areas. So this is learning under expert guidance. Then the baby would, uh, of course, that's not a baby anymore. So then that individual is going to start uh, higher studies where the person is going to learn more about complex application oriented skills. So, for example, engineering students get skilled in one of the disciplines like civil, computer science, electrical, mechanical, etc. Medical students would be learning about anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, etc. So hopefully if you're watching this video, you're probably um, studying some form of IT engineering, computer engineering. And there are some experts in general, uh, the teachers in the respective field who have in-depth subject matter knowledge who help the students in learning these skills. OK, so if there are um, teachers in the field, um, who are who have studied the subject properly then they are the experts in that in that field and they are going to teach you and uh, you're going to learn from them so that is one way of learning under expert guidance and then the person would start working as a professional in some field now though he might have gone through enough theoretical learning in the respective field he still needs to learn more about the hands-on application of the knowledge that he has acquired Right, because that's what happens to most of us that um, we come out from college or school having a lot of theoretical uh, knowledge, uh, but not enough experience on how to practically apply it. So once again, there's some learning and that's why uh, professional mentors are involved. And by virtue of the knowledge that they have gained through years of hands on experience, they will help all newcomers in the field to learn on learn. Uh, what they have to do for their job. So that's why all uh, people who are freshers and who are just starting out in their uh, academic, not academic, but professional um, area, they all are always trained in the beginning so that they get to know how to do their work. In all phases of life of a human being, there is an element of guided learning because we never stop learning. If you 
um, at some point, um, especially in the in the field that we are in, there are always advances. And so today you might be learning machine learning and tomorrow there could be something else that comes up and something else that is uh, that the whole world is talking about and um, you would have to pick up and start learning that. So I, uh, so you might, you know, register for a couple of courses or take some other kind of training from someone. So at every point in time, we always have to learn something under expert guidance that never stops. And this learning is imparted by someone purely because of the fact that he or she has already gathered the, the knowledge by virtue of his or her experience in that field. So even a person who is actually an expert has also studied or learned from other experts, has also, you know, um, implemented those things and gained knowledge through experience. So guided learning is the process of gaining information from a person having sufficient knowledge due to past experience. So experience is important. The next type of learning that we're going to talk about is learning guided by knowledge gained from experts. An essential part of learning also happens with the knowledge which has been imparted by teacher or mentor at some point of time in some other form or context. For example, a baby can group together all objects of same color even if his parents have not specifically taught him to do so. So at some point after, after having learned from some experts, it is up to us to actually be able to um, apply those things in, in actual problems. So uh, there's a good example that, uh, you know, a baby who has been told that this is red and this is blue and this is green uh, has not been taught to actually, you know, collect red objects and put them in uh, one, one drawer and collect blue objects and put them in another drawer. That's something the baby figures out on his or her own. And that's why that baby is able to do this at some point of time because the parents have told him that this is blue, this is red. Okay, so because that initial knowledge or guidance was given, that is why uh, the baby can evolve uh, knowledge-wise and be able to apply that knowledge in various problems in life. A grown-up kid can select one odd word from a set of words because it is a verb and other words are all nouns. So. Maybe the teacher is teaching grammar to the child, right? The teacher is teaching, okay, these are all verbs, these types of words are nouns. Um, but maybe specifically the child has not been given an exercise where uh, he or she is given uh, lots of nouns and asked uh, lots of nouns in one verb and then asked to um, pick out one word from there, which is odd. So that is something where the knowledge that is gained from experts is once again applied. And the, the grown-up kid is able to do this because of his ability to label the words as verbs or nouns taught by his English teacher long back. In a professional role, a person is able to make out to which customers he should market a campaign from the knowledge about preference that was given by his boss long back. So if somebody is in the marketing campaigning business, that person uh, would know who exactly to approach to for that type of a marketing campaign. So you cannot just uh, try to sell beauty products or um, you know things that usually women use. You cannot try to sell that to men. So um, you have to know what the customer's preference will be. And this is something that uh, you would understand that you would learn from the feedback and knowledge passed on to you by your leaders in the professional field. In all these situations, there is no direct learning. So nobody is teaching you this is A, this is B, this is C. I mean, you were taught that, but um, they are you are not being taught how to actually use it and you are figuring that out on your own. It is some past information shared on some different context, which is used as a learning to make decisions. And now, since we have studied this, we come to the last type of learning, which is learning by self or self-learning. In many situations, humans are left to learn on their own. A classic example is a baby learning to walk through obstacles, right? 
uh, maybe the parents can you know support the child by holding the hands but um, that's not the only thing that can um, that can help the baby to learn to walk it's it's the child um, himself or herself that that tries to um, start walking right just like riding a bicycle like I said the child is going to start riding the bicycle on his or her own by you know making several unsuccessful attempts so he's uh, if the baby is learning to walk then he's going to bump onto obstacles fall down multiple times and in the end he's going to learn how to cross over those obstacles obstacles he faces the same challenge while learning to ride a bicycle as a kid or driving a car as an adult so these um, challenges keep on coming and we keep on learning so not all the things are taught by others. A lot of things need to be learned only from mistakes made in the past. And we tend to form a checklist on things that we should do and things that we should not do based on our experiences. So when, when you are just um, starting to ride a bicycle, you probably do not know how to uh, ride the bicycle. But, um, and you also don't understand um, how how to balance right because there are only two wheels so it, it's quite daunting and difficult in the beginning but then as you start driving as you start riding the bicycle you'll understand um, that just by you know shifting your weight you can actually manage to balance so most of the time we learn things by you know past experiences and deciding that this is something we can do this is something we cannot do so that's what uh, human learning is all about and in my next video we will continue and we'll try to draw the analogy between human learning and machine learning so i'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching